Hello and welcome to this little video about the different parts inside a modern radio control helicopter. Now there are already a number of videos in this series so if you're interested in radio control helicopters go and check them out below. Lots of the videos like this one are aimed at those of you that are pretty new to the whole helicopter thing and are interested in how it all works. This one in particular is for a Patreon of mine called Duncan, who was asking about all the different parts, because part of this is kind of figuring out what some of the names of all these different pieces are, feathering shaft, blade grips, main bearing, all kinds of stuff. And we're going to go through all that as well, talk about the difference between a fly bar and a fly bylaws helicopter, uh, CP versus FP, and those things, as well as actually look at the various parts of this helicopter. Now, this OMP Hobby M2 has been supplied by Scotia RC, so a big shout out to those guys. They stock all of the OMP Hobby helicopters, kits, spares, and other pieces as well. So again, I'll put a link down below to those guys. With the manuals from people like OMP Hobby, it's really easy to find what all the different parts are called inside a radio-controlled helicopter. Lots of expanded diagrams, exploded views of all the critical parts. So without any more waffling on, let's get onto the bench and I'll take you through the main parts that are inside a modern radio control heli. So the first thing we'll talk about is the frame. The frame itself can be made up of one or many different parts of typically carbon fiber on a modern helicopter. These carbon fiber pieces are not very thick at all. They're quite thin, but by having lots of uh, alloy parts, they actually bolt together and it makes them incredibly rigid and very strong. You'll notice that the frame itself is not only made of carbon fiber, but there's also lots of aluminium or alloy pieces here. So for example, you've got the block for the tail, you have the piece at the top, which holds the bearing for the top motor and has the mounts for the servos. You have the motor mount here at the bottom and those are all metal and that's pretty standard in a modern helicopter. Obviously have skids at the bottom. Uh, they can be connected in lots of different ways. These are connected by four different bolts. Next thing to talk about then is the fly barless unit. The fly barless unit at the front is essentially the brains of the helicopter. It's a flight controller for those of you that are looking at this from a multi-rotor background. This flight controller does the job of what a physical fly bar does. So a fly bar is an extra piece that sits in the head with two additional little paddles typically. And the way it works is it provides lots of additional stability and also helps ease the load on the servos that drive the pitch of the blades directly. So in a fly bar setup, you don't need a fly barless controller, but if you get rid of that physical extra piece in the head, and it makes it very simple in a fly barless head. So here, for example, you can see there's literally just the one connection from the blade grip down to the swash plate. It means that that all works beautifully and it's very simple. All that extra stability uh, that you lose by not having a fly bar is replaced electronically inside the fly barless unit. Now, the cool thing about that is it means that you can adjust how aggressive that sensitivity is. Uh, so rather than have a physical thing as part of the head that complicates the head a lawful lot, but also means that the kind of sensitivity is set. With a fly barless unit, you can have multiple modes and this one has. So it has like a 6G mode, which is great for hovering and gentle flying. And then it has a 3D mode, which makes everything an awful lot more aggressive. Next thing to talk about then is the motor and main shaft. Uh, the main shaft is the one that goes right from the top of the head through the swash plate, down through the different bearings and connects to the motor. Now, some helicopters that you'll see won't directly connect to the motor like this. They'll actually have what's called a main gear, which is a big round gear at the bottom of the main shaft. And then they'll have a separate little motor with a pinion gear at the bottom. And you, it means you can do things like you can change your gear ratios and stuff. Uh, the big main gears tend to be plastic and teeth do get stripped. So this is a nice way to do it because the shaft is going directly through the motor. The shaft itself, you get spares of these because these tend to be damaged in really bad crashes. It's just a very long bar with a couple of flats milled into it and uh, they'll need replacing if you have a really nasty crash. 
Now, where a lot of the magic happens is this thing here. This is called the swash plate. The swash plate is where all of the controls for how the pitch changes in the blades is set. So I can actually rotate these blades. And if you can see what's, what it's doing, it's actually moving the swash plate at the bottom. So by moving the three servos that are plugged in to the fly barless controller, we can tell the blades exactly what pitch we want. So if we want to move forwards, we want more pitch on the back blade so that it pushes the nose down and we fly forwards. So as the swash plate moves around, we can actually change all of both the cyclic, which is the backwards, forwards, left and right, and also the collective, which is how much pitch you want, which is set by how high the swash is. It's all managed by this clever bit of linkage in the head. And that's why you might hear sometimes when you're reading about helicopters called a CCPM or a cyclic collective pitch mixing. That's what this is talking about. It basically means that you can change the pitch of the blades. So uh, this is also referred to as a CP or, or a collective pitch helicopter. Uh, you can also get FP or fixed pitch helicopters, and that changes the amount of thrust from the blades simply by spinning the motor faster, exactly the way it works in things like a multi-rotor. In a collective pitch helicopter like this, though, you can keep the blades spinning at the same speed, but you can increase the amount of pitch on the blades to rise in the air, or you can decrease the amount of pitch on the blades to lower it down in the air as well. So you basically control your vertical height. Now, interestingly, the blades always ride in the same plane. The rotor disc they create is always flat and parallel. It's the pitch that actually changes as these little plastic pieces follow the position of the swash plate. Very, very clever stuff. Now, in the head of the helicopter, there's lots of clever things going on in here. Inside the head, connecting these two blade grips together, is something called a feathering shaft. Now, the feathering shaft is something that almost always <laughs> seems to get bent in the event of a crash. So the blades themselves can rotate. We've already seen that, and that actually is done by moving the swash plate around. Just trying to be a little bit careful because I'm manhandling the servos here, which they probably won't like too much. Um, but you will notice that if I keep the helicopter level, there is the very smallest bit of amount of play in the blade grip, and that is normal. The reason for that is because there's a number of bearings through here for the uh, for the feathering shaft, including a thrust bearing, because you actually screw these blade grips into the end of the feathering shaft, and that feathering shaft is supported by what's called dampener. That's usually a little rubber or plastic circular O-ring, and that is the shock absorber, you can think of it, for the helicopter. Feathering shafts kind of look like that. Uh, if you get in a helicopter, I would always get a couple of these as spares. Uh, you'll go through them, particularly in the early days, if you have any kind of blade strike where it hits the ground when it's going to land. The tail boom, now this is going out from the frame, out all the way to the tail. Lots of different options for tails on models. You can also have variable pitch tails, which are um, better on more professional helicopters because it means you can change the pitch of the blades to move the tail in both directions, and that's great. With this one, the way it works is that it'll only pull the tail uh, or push the tail in one direction to counteract the rotation of the blades because as the blades are turning in this direction, the motor also wants to turn the body in the opposite direction. So the tail's job is to push against that torque that's generated. So that means that you can speed up this motor and it'll push harder, which will give you uh, a turn in one direction, but then to turn in the other direction, the way this particular fixed pitch tail would work, is you kind of have to slow this blade down and let that torque move the helicopter around. However, there is a system that OMP Hobby has developed called Tally or uh, Torque Assisted Your Left, where the head speed when you want to go the other way will actually speed up and that will whip the tail round so that you don't have a lazy response in one direction. That's very helpful when you're doing kind of 3D or more acrobatic moves. Uh, for those expensive models, a tail setup is uh, has a little servo and it actually allows you to change the pitch. 
So the other thing I'll quickly mention, I'm going to do an entire video on this, is something called pitch curves and throttle curves. So those are things that are on the radio that tell this swash plate where it needs to be and how fast the motor should be turning. A throttle curve will basically tell the motor how quick it needs to move. In what's called normal mode, the throttle curve will allow you to stop the motor and as you increase the throttle on the radio, the head speed will increase. Pretty intuitive stuff. In 3D mode or idle up, then you tend to have the motor running at quite high speed all the time and you change the uh, flying characteristics of the helicopter by just altering the pitch. So you need something called a pitch curve as well as the throttle curve and that pitch curve tells the flight controller and the servos how high this swash plate needs to be because the higher the swash plate is, the more pitch there is on the blades, the more bite in the air there is, there there is and the higher you can fly. And the normal pitch range on a helicopter of this size is going to be kind of plus 11 to minus 11 degrees uh, with zero degrees being at kind of the 50% throttle position-ish. So hopefully that's useful for those of you that are new to helicopters and give you an idea of how everything is laid out. We have the main frame, the tail boom, the tail motor and the rear tail rotor at the back. There's usually some kind of little um, vertical uh, kind of fin out here to help. Then we have the real exciting stuff all happens in either the fly barless controller and then in the head itself where we have three small servos running the height and the orientation of the swash plate. That is then transferred to changes in pitch via this linkage into the blade grip into the blades and then inside this head we have a feathering shaft on which those two blades can rotate. So now you know the anatomy of a modern radio controlled helicopter, you have a better idea what you're looking at when you're looking at things online. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.